Hey, it's Melanie Downey here, and I'm going to show you how to quickly set up your Google Alerts. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're already signed into your Google account, either by having your Gmail open or signed into your YouTube account or anything else that Google owns, because you need that in order to set up your alerts. Then you just head on over to Google, do a oops, search for Google Alerts. You can see I'm terrible typist. Uh, it pops up right here at the top. You click on that and it takes you right to your alerts. So before we create an alert or a first alert, I just want to show you um, how to make sure that you're going to get the right keyword result in your alert setup. So I'm going to click right here to one I already have set up for my name and as you can see, I have it in quotes, and that means that it will take my first name and my last name together as one search term. So only things specifically for Melanie Downey will pop up. Just to show you, if I take the quotes away, uh, and down here you can see it gives you an alert of what your preview would look like. There's some things that actually are about me, um, blogs and articles that I was quoted in, but then other stuff pops up as well. Here you can see Melanie Smith. I don't know who that is. Juan Downey, don't know who that is. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., I do know who that is, but has nothing to do with me. So the way we fix that is just to put quotes around the search parameter and everything that shows up in your alert will be uh, have those two terms together as one search term. Uh, I think most people do know about that just from their regular Google searches, but just in case you don't, um, it's good to know about. So uh, just to walk you through creating an alert, uh, here's one I did on my dog through another workshop. But I'm going to delete that and I'm going to start over again. So we're going to create alert about my dog. I'm going to put it in quotes. Penny the hairless wonder dog. And in case you are wondering, she is completely hairless. I am allergic to dog hair and dog dander, and I'm not allergic to her. That's why we have her. I'm going to now click on create alert, and it shows up right here at the top. Next, I'm going to click on the edit button right here, this little writing implement and it brings you up to all the parameters you can choose. So I'll just walk you through each of these. Um, how often, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can choose to set it up as it happens. So as something with your search term hits the internet, Google will send it to you right away. Um, at most once a day means that it will aggregate everything that happened over the course of the day and sent it to you. And then the same goes for at most once a week. So I like to keep mine at, at most once a day, unless, of course, I am searching for a search term for some sort of breaking news or trend that I'm trying to keep on top of and respond to it as it's happening. Um, would also be important if you are actually a PR person and you're monitoring news for your clients. You'd want to know about stuff as it happens so that you could respond and then talk to your clients about uh, what you're doing for your next step. So I'm going to keep that at, at most once a day. Sources is another important one. If you keep it in, on automatic, which is what uh, the alert automatically sets it up for, it will send you sort of an aggregate of whatever Google deems most important um, on the internet that day. And that changes a lot of times based on what their algorithm is, which as you know, Google always seems to be changing its algorithms. So what I like to do is just click on each one of these individually to make sure I get everything. Um, and just to walk through these, news, self-explanatory, it's anything from a news site blogs, we all know what blogs are, anything on the web, that would be just um, like a company's web pages, videos, video books, discussions includes like forums and other chat venues. So if you want to monitor all this stuff, just click it individually. You can choose your language here. You can choose your region. 
Um, depending on what type of business you're in, you can choose just where you live. Like if I had a you know, medical practice in the United States, I would really only care about stuff that's happening in my locale. So I would click on United States. Um, but if you were in a business where you have international clients or you might have customers um, from a place other than where you reside, just click, uh, keep it on any region. And then how many? You can have only the best results, which means Google will choose for you what the best results are. I like to keep it on all results. Um, since I'm monitoring the media, uh, I wanna make sure I get all the results because you know, small newspapers and, and local TV, TV shows are just as important to me as you know, the big national ones. And then here on Deliver2, you wanna make sure that your alerts are actually being sent to an email address that you actually use. And then you just click on update alert. You can also click on the settings button right up here at the top and you can set up what time of day you want to receive your alerts if you've uh, set them to just once a day or once a week. Um, I currently have mine set up for the morning. I used to have them set up for nine o'clock at night thinking like, oh, while well, I'm sitting and relaxing and just watching TV, I'll check and see, you know, what what's happened over the day, but it would be nine o'clock, 9.30, I'd see something I wanted to respond to, and then I would be up all night, and my husband didn't like that. So I have them set for seven o'clock in the morning. And I have them again set for at most once a day, and it's delivered to my email address. Click save, and that is how you set up your Google Alerts. Thanks.